Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is 7.14 on a Friday. So you're probably wondering, why am I doing a video at 7.14 on a Friday? And the answer is, this is a very special one-off video celebrating the launch of 1914, um, which is co-founded by D. Christopher. Now, if you don't know what 1914 is, what rock have you been living under? I did an interview with D two or three months ago on this channel. You can find it in the Talk Magic playlists. And he was talking about his new company, 1914, and his aspirations of how he wants to realistically change the game when it comes to magic production. Well, that time has come. As of today, the 19th of February... At 1914, the 1914 has officially gone live. And they've gone live with five brand new products. D and his team have been teasing these products uh, for probably about two or three months now, if not more. Uh, these products have been in the works for the last two or three years. You can get the whole history on 1914 by going and watching my interview with D. Uh, the 1914 existed many, many years ago. And then when D started working on Killer Magic and doing a whole bunch of stuff with, with Penguin Magic, uh, he took a step back. And now... Uh, the 1914 is back with a vengeance and then some. But I've got some exciting news. I have uh, been lucky enough to get access to their launch tricks like two or three weeks ago. So I've had quite a while to watch these, devour them, learn them. And this is a very special uh, review show. It's going to be uh, a review show looking at all of the launch titles of 1914. This whole thing has been shrouded in so much mystery that uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, what are these titles going to be? There's been little teases and little photos. Nobody knows what they're going to be. Well, I've watched them all. I've looked at them all. And I'm going to be talking to you about the whole lineup for 1914 right now. Uh, two things that you need to know before I start looking at the tricks uh, and before I telling you about the tricks. Number one, I'm not going to do any live performances on this video. I will be performing most of their uh, products over the next two or three weeks. And you can look it out for those on Magic Lives. Uh, but today, I want to just tell you about the different uh, launch titles they've got and what I think about them. The second thing is, I do consider dear friend. However, and I told this to him. I am going to be completely 100% honest with what I think about each one of these products. Uh, it's all I've got. If, if I don't like it, and I said this today, if I don't like it, D, I'm going to let them know and I'm going to tell everyone what I think about it. And he was absolutely fine with that. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the first launch title for the brand new company, 1914. Right, so let's start off with the, uh, I, I would like to say that this is probably the flagship product for the 1914. This is called the Shadow Wallet, which has been created by D. Christopher. And uh, the Shadow Wallet is a new thing. I've never really seen anything like this before. The Shadow Wallet is basically a wallet that allows you to do a whole bunch of different stuff. Now, anybody who knows D and has, has, has looked at the different things that D have released over the years, you'll know that he was, he was very, very famous releasing through Penguin his Razor Wallet. And the Razor Wallet is great. And a lot of people have bought the Razor Wallet. So the question is, what is the Shadow Wallet? How is it different to the Razor Wallet? And why should you buy another wallet? Well, let me tell you what the Razor Wallet is first. Not the Razor Wallet, sorry. Let me tell you what the Shadow Wallet is first of all. There's really two main parts to the shadow wallet. The first part is a thought of card routine where you show your wallet. Uh, you can show that you've got one folded up card inside the wallet. You can show the wallet. Uh, you've got one folded up card in there. You then uh, have this wonderful script that D goes through with you uh, where you talk about being in a casino. And, and basically, the end result is somebody has a free choice of a card. Uh, they feel like they've got a free choice of a card. You then reach into the wallet. You pull out the folded up card. You unfold it, and it's their selected card. That's basically what it is. It's a thought of card in wallet. Uh, you've got that one folded up card in the wallet and it hits every single time. You put that back away inside the wallet and it instantly resets. Um, the second part of the Razor wallet is you have got one of the most convincing peaks I've ever seen. So if you like a peak wallet, uh, this is like a peak wallet on steroids. You have somebody write something down, 
You put it inside the wallet, you put the wallet away, and you've peaked the information. It's as simple as that, and it's a very direct peak with no angle problems at all. Now, I wanna tell you the pluses of the wallet, first of all. So, uh, it looks like a modern wallet. You know, like those old school wallets that are like massive? Uh, it's not like that. It looks like a very minimalistic wallet. And you see some wallets, like I'm a big fan of the, uh, uh, the, the, the I think it's called the Alias Wallet that we reviewed on the show a few weeks ago. Um, but unlike the Alias Wallet, there's more space to put your stuff. The Alias Wallet has got limited space to put your stuff. This wallet, you've got space for your business cards, you've got space for your credit cards, you've got space for your money, but you've still got access for everything that the trick does, which is great. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very modern looking wallet. It's the sort of wallet that you can carry around with you every single day, but you put some business cards in there, you're ready to do the peak. You also have your thought of card routine that you're ready to go anytime, anywhere. Um, also, uh, so, so, so the wallet looks really, really good. I'm trying to think of everything here. Um, second of all, the, 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 the actual thought of card in wallet is incredibly clever. Uh, on the download, D actually does the, uh, the downloads with Louis Lavelle, uh, who is an incredibly, we'll talk more about Louis in a bit, but Louis is an incredible mentalist. And uh, D and Louis, this is a two hour download. Now, I have been banging on on this channel about uh, tricks that come out and you get like a five minute download and it doesn't really teach you everything that you need to know. You just get the bare bones, but it doesn't teach you the theory behind why it works. Well, this has gone completely in the other direction. And this is something that I've actually noticed about a lot of the uh, products that the 1914 are putting out. They really put their time into the explanations. It feels like, you know, it's a two hour download. The first 50 minutes is just on the thinker card routine. And you're probably thinking, well, why does it spend 50 minutes teaching a thinker card routine when it is in essence self-working? And the reason is they, um, they, 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 they go through so many different options. They've got the sort of the classic handling, which D demonstrates, but then they go through so many other different versions, including a really wonderful version where uh, they've combined the shadow wallet with um, a Michael Murray style principle. And, and the end result is you just say to somebody, basically, they get the impression that they have thought of any card. You can take the card out of the wallet before they've even told you the card and you open it and it's their card. I mean, the thinking behind this is really, really clever. And Lewis and D really bounce, uh, bounce off each other very well. But the, the thought of card, what's nice is you see a lot of thought of card routines that have, um, like Dave Penn. Okay, Dave Penn brought out that, uh, uh, that, that, that routine at Blackpool where uh, there was a wallet and inside the wallet's an envelope and inside the envelope is a card and, and inside the card is the selected card. And that's great and everything, but you need to carry that wallet around with you. And that wallet is set up specifically to do that trick. You couldn't really put anything else in there. It's designed to do that trick. So if you're out and about, you might not take that wallet with you. With this, you've got this built into the wallet. You've got special cards that come with the, uh, the trick. You've got special wallet and, and it's built into the actual wallet. So your everyday wallet is set up to do a thought of card routine with no props anytime, anywhere. And you know, one uh, trick that I love is the Predator Wallet by Paul Wilson. This is a strong, the, the way that the think of a card is actually um, sort of uh, routined. It's as good as the Predator Wallet, which is the highest praise that I can give it. And as for the peak, the peak is really strong as well. I mean, the peak is incredibly strong. And I was wondering how they were gonna do the peak with, with the wallet set up to actually have money and have credit cards, whilst at the same time having this think of a card routine. I'm like, how are they gonna be able to work a peak into this as well? But they did, they worked a peak into it. And they didn't just go, okay, here's what you do. You put the card here, you then do this, and then that's the peak. Again, Lewis goes through so many different handling tips. There's nobody better at mentalism than Lewis, as far as I'm concerned, he's amazing. Uh, and I'm a big fan of him even more now that I've seen a lot of his stuff. And it's incredible, right? It's just incredible. Um, the way that this peak works and he goes through every little thing. It's like, well, okay, now you can do it like this or you can do it like this. Let me talk about the body language. What you're going to do is you're going to do this and it's a natural action to do this, which is a stark contract to something like uh, Triple Helix, for example. And I don't want to pick on tri Triple Helix any more than I already have, but it's the perfect example because there's a trick where they presented you with the gaffes and said, this is how you make it up. This is what you do with it. Thanks very much. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Well, this is a full-on teaching on how to use this wallet. By the time you finish this download, 
you're probably going to have learned more than the wallet. They go into principles that you could apply in your other magic. It's, and that's the mission statement of 1914. They want to make better magicians. And the way they do that is by being crystal clear in their explanations. So yeah, routine number one uh, is shadow wallet. I am absolutely going to use this as my everyday wallet. You know, I really, really am because it's got so much built into it and it looks like a normal wallet. I'm giving it 100%. It is really good. It's highly recommended. Now let's move on to the next product. Okay, so the next product we're going to be looking at is going to be Osmo by Dalton Wayne. Osmo by Dalton Wayne. Now what, um, yeah, I don't know about you guys, right? I don't know about you guys, but when I learn a trick, a lot of the time, I learned the trick on my phone, which is why I've talked on the review show in the past about it really annoys me when somebody just puts a little piece of paper uh, in there with a YouTube link, craziest, I'm looking at you. It's just so annoying, uh, and which is why I've said, hey, get a QR code or something like this. Well, what the 1914 have done with this, this is a uh, probably a 20 or a 30 minute download to teach you a trick, and we'll talk about the trick in a minute, but they film the trick in vertical video. It's designed specifically for a phone. Yeah, you could watch it on a laptop or a computer or something like that, but it's designed specifically for a phone. So, you know, if, you, if you've got the product and you're like, okay, brilliant, let me just have a look at this, you can just open it and you can watch it directly on a phone. It's that thinking that, that really is changing the game in the industry. It's thinking about how people consume content and what's the best way that we can put that content together to deliver it to the end consumer. So I was super impressed when this was like a vertical video. I was like, this is really cool um, but let's talk about the trick so Dalton Wayne released a version of this many many years ago um, and it's basically a coining can think um, the Wayne Houching coining can or the uh, or the um, uh, you know, Chris Angel did it didn't he uh, where he takes a coin and a can and throws a coin into a can and 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 then opens it and tips out and and the coins in there you can look up in there and you can see it's in there and that sort of thing um it's it's kind of like that but it's better because the the, the Wayne Houching coin and can I never really did that because although I like it the problem with it is, and, and I'm not giving too much away by telling you this, because I'm sure you'll know that, it's not really in the can. It's, it's a very clever sequence of moves designed to make people think it's in the can, but it's not. With this, it's actually in the can. Now, with the original version of this from many, many years ago, it, it was deceptive, but it was quite angly, and it, it was, I don't really want to give away how it worked, but the way that it worked, it wasn't examinable afterwards. Uh, there were a few issues with it, although the visual looked really good. Well, what they've done is they've reworked the Dalton Wayne Osmo effect, and D has worked, D and D's team have worked with Dalton, and they've created this way of doing the original effect. But now, you can literally show this can on all sides. Then you can have an empty can. Uh, the way that D prefers to do it is with, the, with like an empty can. So the can's been, the liquid's been tipped out, um, which allows you to take a coin and throw it in there, which is bigger than the opening of the can. The problem with the Wayne Houchin version is the coin could go into the can. With this, you could take a silver dollar and throw it into the can. In fact, you can throw anything in there. It doesn't have to be, it could be a guitar plectrum, it could be a key, it could be anything. You can throw anything into this can. But they've, they've created a way of doing this where you can pretty much show the can on all sides. And then you've got this moment where you go and you throw it in, your hands are empty, you show the can again, and then you hear it in there, you tip it upside down, they can look inside, it's actually inside there. And then you, you tear it open and you give them the, you know, they, you get them to take the thing out that you've thrown in there. That's basically the effect. And I, when I first watched that, when I first watched this, uh, and I never saw the original, I'm talking to you about the original based on having now researched it after watching this video. But when I first watched it, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. Will that work? I was a little bit unsure about whether it would work or not. I'm like, that's really clever. Will that work? So I tried it on Sarah and Ryland and Thea. I, I prepped a, uh, a can, uh, which takes like seconds to prep, by the way. I prepped a can and I was like, hey guys, let me, let me show you this. Look, I'm gonna do something with the can. Now Sarah and Ryland, not so much Thea, but Sarah and Ryland, they know a lot about magic, right? And Ryland, he was so fooled. I just did this, boom, it's in the can, done. 
ripped it open. He had no idea how it was worked. He thought it was a, I did it with a key. He thought it was a folding key or something like that. He was just completely fooled. And that kid knows a lot about magic. Um, I was like, okay, this, this has got legs. This is really, really cool. Um, it take, you can also do it with liquid in the can. So you don't just have to have an empty can. I like the idea of having an empty can, to be perfectly honest. However, um, you could have a can uh, that looks like it's full, throw it in there, tip the liquid out, and then show it's in there, and then rip it open. You could do that as well if you wanted to. Um, that's, that's, that's absolutely not a problem. It takes not very long. It takes seconds to prepare the can. In fact, D goes through a way of being able to carry something around with you that takes up virtually no pocket space so that you can prep this at a moment's notice. So if you're with, with friends, where maybe at a barbecue or something, remember when we were allowed to have barbecues, um, you could go and grab a can and prep it in just a few seconds and then come back and do it. So the prep is just a few seconds. And because of the adjustments that Dee's team have made to this, it is now completely angle-proof and really, really looks good. Um, I like the idea of having this can um, you know, like doing doing a set. I like the idea of doing a parlor show or something and having a can there and you know you're drinking the can and maybe you're incorporating it into into your act. Maybe you're doing a card under card under can something. A little bit like the uh, Steve Bedwell um, Walkman Act where, you know, the card appears underneath the can and you go, well, I'm going to get that, coin, that card underneath that can five times, um, five or six times. And every single time you're doing something else, and, but did you see the card go back under the can? Did you see the card go back under the can? And then I like the idea of openly taking the signed card, folding the signed card up into quarters and saying, watch, I've got this card underneath this can X amount of times now, but watch this. Boom. And then throwing the signed card into the can for the finale to the act. I think that would really go well. You know, and at the end, you open up the can that's been there the whole time. You've been doing this card under can thing. And then you open up and the, the folded up card is inside the can. I like that. So, yeah, I'm going to give this. Uh, it doesn't come with any gimmicks. You don't need any gimmicks with it. Uh, D teaches you how to prep the can. You can just buy a can from the shop and prep it. Um, I can see myself using this quite a lot. If anybody knows me, they know I like organic material and I, they know I like doing stuff organically. This feels very organic to me, especially if I'm like, um, you know, you wouldn't want to go to a gig with 20 of these cans prepped. That'd be ridiculous. But maybe for the right time, right place for the head table, you know, you've got this can or if you, you know, you get asked in the bar, hey, do you want to show, can you show me something? Yeah, so there's so many different ways that you can actually do this and the ability to prep it in seconds on the fly and then just be able to do it is great. So yeah, I'm going to give this 90%. This is definitely going into my act. The only reason it's not getting 100 is because, you know, I don't give many products 100. The, the um, Shadow Wallet got 100 because I think it's a game changer, but I do think Osmo is very, very good. And for those people that like visual magic, this is super visual. And it shows, you know, a lot of people are thinking that the 1914, um, that, that it's all about, uh, it's all about um, mentalism, which is absolutely not the case. It's really not because they're doing so much more. This is the perfect example. It's a really visual uh, trick, a magic trick, but it looks really good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is the art of stagecraft, uh, which is a full-on teaching product. Now, one thing that Dee and his team with the new company have been trying to do is really change the way that magic instruction is actually delivered to the end user. And a lot of the time, what's happening with magic these days is even if it's a really detailed download that goes into great detail, it's normally just one video. Um, the only exception I can think of is Illusionist. Illusionist do have, you know, when you log into Illusionist, they have broken it down into segments. Um, but generally, as a rule, you get a product, it's like, go on Murphy's to watch this, and it's one long video, whatever it may be. Um, one thing that uh, uh, Dean and his team are trying to do is put on courses. So it's not just tricks that they're selling, but they're selling full-on video courses. And what they've done is... In the back end of the website, they've got this whole course player thing. And this isn't, this isn't like an off-the-shelf uh, solution. This isn't something like, hey, they've signed up for a year's trial to Thinkific or something like this. This is just coded specifically from the ground up 
for their purposes and their needs. They've got Coda, uh, who has, has done absolutely everything here. Now, what's really cool about this is the way the course player works with projects like this, the, uh, the, art, of, uh, the art of Stagecraft. Um, the way that the, the course player works is you can go in, it's divided into segments, you start watching it, then you go off, you go off somewhere, you, you know, you've gone to watch a film or whatever it may be, you've left. When you come back, it'll tell you where you've got to and you can start from that point, a little bit like net, net, Netflix or something like that, which is a great way because sometimes you know especially with this 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 art of stagecraft it's like two and a half hours long it, it, you know, not a lot of people are going to want to devour this in one sitting i did but a lot of people aren't going to want to devour it in one sitting so having the ability to uh you know have it there and access it whenever you want it and then go back and start from the same place and have it broken down and so on and so forth i think that's really good i love what they've done with that on the website now what is it well the, the uh, i've got it here alexander mar i've never heard of him before so i had to write his name down the Art of Stage Backcraft by Alexander Marsh. Never heard of Alexander Marsh before. I don't know why, because having now watched him, I don't think that there's many people that know as much about performing on stage as this guy. Now, he is a full-time mentalist, stage mentalist at the top of his game. Um, I can tell that he doesn't just uh, talk the talk, but he, he definitely walks the walk. And he spends the entire video talking to you about stagecraft. Now, let me explain why this is so important. I have put videos on the channel about um, how to transition from a close-up performer to a stage performer. I think now more than ever, this is really important because when we get through this pandemic, and it's probably gonna happen at some point this year or at some point, we're gonna get through this pandemic and when we can go out and we can start performing again, um, I think that the first thing that's going to be acceptable is stage magic. Close-up magic will still be booked. However, I think people are gonna be more cautious about close-up magic for a while, but having a stage magician on stage, one person on stage, if you can put yourself a stage show together where it's interactive without having audience members standing on stage right next to you, I think that that will be um, very highly in demand. And I've spoken, a lot on this channel about how people need to learn how to perform on stage. Well, what Alexander goes through is he talks exactly how to perform on stage. And oh my gosh, he leaves no stone unturned. I don't want to get too much into this because there's so many principles that he's gone through. It's crazy. I've got a couple of notes here. Um, but one thing that uh, he does, he starts the whole thing off. He talks about it from a stage mentalism point of view because he is a mentalist. But anybody who performs on stage, it might be a magician, it might be an illusionist, uh, even a kid's entertainer that performs on big stages, they will get something out of this 100%. Um, absolutely. He starts off by talking about the process, in his case, reading minds, the process of the reading minds. And he doesn't mean like the methodology and how the tricks are done, but he's talking about how you actually make it look to the audience like you're reading minds. And I've never thought about it like that before. You know, I've never thought about how do I want the audience to perceive that I'm able to do my magic? And it's a really important thought, and that's just right at the very beginning. Uh, he goes into characterization and talking about having a character. He talks about the best way to rehearse, and that's something that I think a lot of magicians gloss over. We all talk about rehearsal, but he actually goes into depth about how to actually rehearse properly and how to block and, and, and different concepts that I thought were absolutely fascinating. Like when I put this on and I looked at it, I was like two and a half hours, and it was quite late at night and I was like oh my gosh this is a long one right okay here we go I was transfixed he was going to I've performed on stage for many 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 years and I was learning stuff that I'd never even thought of this is something that's great for people that have never performed on stage but even if you're a seasoned pro and you've been on stage a long time you're going to learn so much from this he talks about vocal projection and he talks about projecting your voice and the difference between shouting and and and, and being heard which I thought was great and then he did what's that concept he did uh, yeah he took he, he does a lot of um he talks a lot about the how being a performer on stage whether you're a magician or a mentalist is very similar to being a stand-up comedian and it, it not in terms of telling jokes and being a comedy magician or being a comedy mentalist he's talking about the whole 
way that a joke is structured, setting up the premise of the joke and, and the structure of the joke. And he says that's very, very similar to a magic trick or, or to a piece of mentalism. And I was fascinated when he said that because, again, I've never thought about it like that, but it's so true. And he talked about this concept called broad, narrow, broad. Uh, and what broad, narrow, broad is, basically, he's talking about when, um, a, a, again, it's something that he got from a, from a stand-up comedian friend of his. And he says that, uh, you know, when a stand-up comedian goes out, first of all, they'll tell, uh, they'll have a set of jokes that are broad, they're designed to work for the whole audience to bring them in. And then they'll have this narrow section where it, it's, it's, it's really just for a niche group and it might be something that's personal to them. And then you finish off with another broad, um, another broad set to push it out to the really fascinating stuff that I'd never thought before. And then he gave real examples of how you can actually build that into your own, your own set. Look, I, I could talk about this for hours. Uh, and I've been recommending this to everybody. I've got friends that I jam with and I've already said to them, they have to get this. Anybody who's performing on stage needs to get this. This is absolutely exceptional. Uh, you know, I've read books on performing on stage. I've seen lots of books. I've seen downloads before. Nothing, in my opinion, holds a candle to this. And the problem with a lot of books is there are so many visual learners out there that don't... Um, that don't really, uh, you know, get books or they can't take the information in. This guy is so engaging and, and, and Dee and his team have gone to great lengths to make this look so quality. Like he's filming it in a theatre. You know, the, there's sections when, the, when, uh, when Alexander's standing on stage, like for example, when he's talking about vocal projection and he's on stage so you can actually see how that would play on stage. It's, the whole thing's brilliant. This is 100% as well. Um, I know that there's going to be people that are going to be watching this that are going to go, well, nah, this isn't for me. I'm not. But trust me, if you want to be a professional magician in the next couple of years, I think that you need to have the ability to perform on stage. And if you want to learn how to perform on stage, I'm telling you right now, there is no better way of learning to perform on stage than watching The Art of Stagecraft by Alexander Marsh. It is absolutely brilliant. I stake my reputation on how good this is. Okay, so as we're talking about Alexander Marsh, we'll talk about Cocktail, uh, which is the next product that's been released. And Cocktail is another one of those products that are being shot in vertical video. It's like a 25 minute, half an hour download. So it's perfect for the vertical video uh, sort of way of teaching that they've actually pioneered um, here, which is great. So it's, it's all shot in vertical video. You can watch it on the, gro on the go. And, and Cocktail is a very interesting idea. Um, it's shot kind of behind a bar and Alexander's there with a, uh, with a cocktail shaker and, uh, and the performance is very simply, he has somebody think of a cocktail and say, think of a, an ingredient in this cocktail. Imagine the most wonderful cocktail in the world. Think of that secret ingredient that's in the cocktail. It doesn't have to be something alcoholic. It could be unicorn tears. It could be blood. It could be absolutely anything. Use your imagination. Write it down. He then takes the piece of paper back that's been folded up, rips it up, throws the ripped up pieces inside the cocktail shaker, adds a bit of mixer, shakes it up, pours out the water, uh, pours out the cocktail, drinks it, and then tells them the thing that they're thinking of, which is a really nice way of doing a revelation of a, uh, of, of, of a piece of information that you've managed to get uh, access to, right? Um, he talks about how he created this routine uh, when he was booked to do a gig and they wanted him behind the bar reading minds and telling people what drinks they were going to have and he created it for that con for that concept now what you are learning here is the presentation for the routine one but the main thing that you're learning is alexander's center tear now i've talked about this on the channel before i was never actually great at doing the center tear until i watched steve della do it uh steve della i, I watched him lecture on the center tear and that's how i learned it um this center tear um, is, is brilliant, is, is brilliant. If you don't know what a centre tear is, it's a way of ripping up a piece of paper that somebody has written on, dropping the pieces of paper, and then having, even though it feels like there's no way you could get access to the information, you've immediately got access to the information. Now, the problem with the centre tear, a lot of the time, is when you, you have to draw a circle in the middle of the piece of paper you're using, and you need to get them to write on the centre of that circle, because that's where you need the information. What, Alexander, what Alexander's done with his centre tear 
is you steal a bigger piece of, of, of the paper. The technique that is put together allows you to take more surface area, which means that you don't have to direct them to where they're going to, uh, where they're going to write the information and you can actually get more information. It also pops over very, very easily. And again, with all of the stuff that these guys are putting out, it's not just a case of this is the center tear, it's done, thank you very much. There's a lot more to it than that. We're talking about body, uh, body language, we're talking about how to cover things, we're talking about misdirection not just in the context of the cocktail routine, but also in the context of um, uh, every other way that you could do it. If you don't do a center tear, this is a great way to learn a center tear. If you do do a center tear, I think this is better. Whether you, now, whether you wanna take the plunge on this, you know, if you're somebody that's been doing the center tear for 15 years and you're absolutely happy with how you do the center tear, should you buy this product? Well, probably not because you already do a center tear. If you're happy with it and you've never had a problem with it and you're comfortable doing it that way, why have another way of doing it? I, I, I can't, I don't think that would be necessary. But if you don't do the center tear or if you do a center tear, but maybe you don't do it particularly great or you've always struggled with doing it, this is a fantastic solution to the center tear. It really is. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Alexander having watched these two projects of his. He's a great thinker of mentalism. And even though I openly tell people I'm not a mentalist, I do mental magic at best, I can appreciate when mentalism is done well. And, uh, and this is a guy who does mentalism very, very well. And his thinking behind the center tear is great. I'm gonna give it 80%. Um, I've played around with it. I'm more comfortable doing it the way that Steve Della taught me, but that's just because I've only spent like a couple of days working on this, this center tear and I've spent like a couple of years working on the way that Steve taught me to do it. Um, I am gonna carry on working on it because I, I like, you know, he goes through all of the pros of actually using his center tear. And there are a lot of pros that I can resonate with and I can go, yeah, that's a good point. If I could do that, then I could do that. And if you don't do a center tear, this is an amazing way to learn to do the center tear because this is just, it's a technique that you should lose because then you've got a business card and anytime, anywhere, you can just literally have somebody write something, rip it up, throw it on the floor, whatever, and, and it, it's almost an impromptu miracle. So I'm going to give this 80%. I want to do it. I'm not in a position where I can do it right now uh, because I don't think I'm doing it as well as what I do already, but I will continue to work on it because there are a lot of pros and a lot of advantages over what I'm doing at the moment. But there you go. That's another good product. Okay, and the final product that we're going to be looking at in the launch lineup is uh, Revelations. Revelations by Louis Lavelle. Uh, now, Louis Lavelle is the guy that was appearing with D. Christopher on the Shadow Wallet Explanation. Uh, I've known Louis for many, many years. I remember interviewing him with David Penn back in the Wizard Product Review days when he, uh, when he was bringing stuff out years and years and years ago. This is a guy who knows his stuff. Let me tell you right now. This is a guy that absolutely knows his stuff. Uh, he's an amazing mentalist. And I've never seen this Revelations project. I've never seen any, any other project like this. Um, before I tell you what it's all about, let me explain. Once again, it's been shot so that uh, it uses the same format as the Art of Stagecraft. So it's broken down step by step in the back end of the website and uh, you can go away and you can come back and you can rewatch and rewatch because it's quite a long, uh, it's quite a long video course. It's coming up on an hour and a half or two hours. There's a lot of information there. It's very difficult to digest it all in one go. But what Revelations is, is it deals specifically with how you reveal the information that you have peaked as a mentalist. So you've peaked some information through whatever method it is that you like to pick the information. How do you then reveal it? Which is a really interesting project, right? Because you don't normally see people talking about that. Um, normally, it's like you get a, uh, you, you, you know, you buy a peak device and it's like, well, this is how the peak device works. This is the theory behind the peak device. There you go. And you might get a live performance of the, uh, of the of the performer maybe doing it one way, one particular way. No, and even on download, even on like a L&L DVD, you know, and you look at somebody like Richard Osterlund or something like that, when somebody presents a routine where they're peaking information, they don't normally talk about, you know, let's talk about all the different ways of actually revealing this information. 
But when you actually think about it, that's such an important thing to consider. You know, if, you, if we compare this to magic, Di Vernon, you know, says that if you know a force, if you know 100 forces and one revelation, well, you know one card trick. But if you know one force and 100 different revelations, you know 100 different card tricks. And, and why is that principle never been carried over to mentalism before? If you know 10 ways of peaking information, but one way of revealing it, then you know one mentalism routine. But if you know one peak in 15 different ways of revealing it, technically you know 15 different mentalism routines. I've never thought about it like that before. I've thought about it with magic, but I've never thought about it with mentalism. But it is absolutely true. And every single mentalist I see, well, no, no, there's a couple of different ways that people do it. Normally it's kind of like, right, so let me look into your mind. You are thinking of a concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Uh, okay, I see, a, I see a woman in front of me. Is that right? Yes, I see a woman. And you're kind of just doing this pseudo psychic style routine. Or the only other way that people do it is like a Darren Brown style thing where it's kind of very, you know, psychological illusionist type way. Those are the two ways that it's done. Well, what Lewis does on this on this um, on this video course is he goes through in depth <sighs> tons of different ways that you can actually reveal the information once you've peaked it. Now, for the sake of completeness, Lewis goes through a peak, which is a very old peak. I've actually seen, it's a peak that I did. I was really excited because I'm not a mentalist and I watched Lewis talk about his favorite peak and I'm like, oh my gosh, I do that peak. Um, and I learned it from Richard Osselin many, many years ago. Um, uh, and it's a great peak. It's for me, it's one of the best ways to peak information off a business card. You have somebody write something down, you're not tearing it up or anything. You just, you just, uh, you know, they, they, they write it down, they fold it up, you, they give it to you and you either give it to somebody else or put it in your pocket and that information is peaked in that second. It's very, very clean. Um, Lewis has had full permission to teach this method. He openly says it's not his method. He's been given full permission to teach it. And uh, he says, I want to give you the information about how to peak something. So if you're a beginner and you've never done peaks before, or you have never peaked information that's been written down, but on a business card, that's fine. They've got you covered because they've actually covered that in this and have given you what I think is one of the best peaks that you can do. However, if you want another peak, you can go look at Cocktail because there's another one on there, as I've just discussed. Um, but that's just done at the very beginning. The majority of the download is talking to people about how you can reveal this information in many, many different ways. And I don't want to go, this is what you're paying your money for. I don't want to go into detail. I don't want to say, well, he suggests this and he suggests this and he suggests this because I think just giving you an overview of what he talks about is devaluing the product here. And, and to be clear, I think this is a great product. Now, I'll openly tell you that I peak information and uh, I do it in my act and I'm one of those guys that pretty much reveals the information exactly the same way. I always do it the same way. Ba 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 I was like, okay, I concentrate, okay, I do this, do this, do this. It's always the same way. This has opened up my eyes. Even though I'm not a mentalist and I'm a mental magician, I still have looked at this and it's it's helped me think along the lines of what I can do to really improve my performance. Uh, this is information that's been given by a real worker. And this is a guy that knows his stuff. And I, 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 am, I will be very surprised if somebody gets this and doesn't get some value out of it. And like I say, I've never really seen a product like this before. And I'd never thought about this before. And for me, this is a game changer. This is, this is, this is really a game changer because this is something that's got me thinking in a completely different way about stuff that I'm already doing, which is why I don't want to really go into depth about what it is that Lewis is talking about because I don't want to give anything away. All I'm going to suggest is buy it. This is 95%. You've got access to the material straight away. You're not having to wait for anything to get posted out to you. Um, the As I said to you before, the back end of the website is fantastic. You can immediately start learning it. And it is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful project. And again, and this is what I'm seeing over and over again with these guys, 
I, I sat down to watch it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really long. And then within 15 minutes, I was hooked and the time just flew by. Uh, and I'll go back and I'll watch it again and again and again because the information is so valuable. So yeah, if you're a mentalist or you want to start doing mentalism, I know I get the question all the time, hey, I want to start doing mentalism. What's the best way to do it and all this sort of stuff? I'd highly recommend going and looking at this product. It's really, really good. I'm going to give it 95%. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now that it's, it's, it's going to really make you think about not just your mentalism, but also your magic. Right, that's it. So that's a review of all of the launch titles for the new company. Um, I am very aware, just so you know, when I review stuff with Ryland, or in this case on my own, I don't actually know what mark I'm giving it. I don't sit down beforehand and go, right, I'm going to give this 90%. I talk about it, and as I'm talking about it, and I know roughly what I'm going to say, but as I talk about it, I'm kind of thinking internally, what grade would I give this? What am I going to give this? Um, and so I didn't know before actually sitting down and filming all of this what grade I would give a lot of these products. And I've given, I'm have given. i aware that I've given a lot of these products a very high grade, but the reason I have is because they are all quality. Now, you're watching this. If you're watching this on the Friday when I put it up, at nine o'clock tonight, I've got a rant. And the rant is about substandard products being released to the magic community. And one of the big things that I point out in there is the amount of instructional downloads that come with products where they don't give you the information you need to do the pro to do the trick properly. It might be the best trick in the world, but if it's angly or there's issues that you that you, it's difficult to overcome, how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with that? You know, if there's no live performance footage so you can see how how, how it's gonna work, how is that gonna help you? And this is what I believe is a real issue in the magic community. And what what we see here with these five products is they have absolutely changed the game. They have thought about everything. It's like, right, okay, we're going we're gonna to put a, uh, some information out about stagecraft. How is the best way to present this information? Well, let's go and get a theatre, and then let's go and put it in this format. Okay, well, this is a 25-minute download. What's the best way to look at this? Well, people are going to look at it on their mobile phone. Let's film it vertically. And they are not afraid to have a longer download to give people all the information they need to be able to do this straight away. You know, there's very few products that are released these days where it's a really long, tutorial but you need this sometimes you know this there are other companies that would have released the shadow wallet that would have done this in 15 minutes and it would have been a case of this is the wallet this is how you set it up and uh, and then this is what you say and this is what you do and that's the trick thanks very much but d went to the trouble of getting lewis to sit on the download with him and spent two hours talking about every single aspect of the trick how to perform it, what happens if this happens, what happens with this happens. And I've got to tell you right now, magic producers around the whole world, you are officially on notice because the game has been changed as far as I'm concerned and it has been upped. And the issues that I've been talking about while I've been ranting have been addressed and have been improved on. And I am a massive fan of what D is doing. I really am a massive fan of what he's doing. And I'm not saying other companies aren't doing a great job as well, because they are. But there's other production companies out there that half ass things and put things out in a half assed way and give you a little slip of paper with a YouTube link to an unlisted video. And it's just smacks of unprofessionalism and disorganization. And, and, and what these guys are doing is they have absolutely changed the game. And I'm super excited to see where they come, uh, what, what they come out with in the future. So I highly advise you to go over to the website, the link's down below, go over to the website, sign up, and, and, and try, try a trick out. I mean, just my gosh, everything. I, I'm not going to go into the reviews again, but there's not one thing that I didn't get something out of. Every single launch title, I'm definitely going to do Osmo, the can thing. I'm definitely going to do Shadow Wallet. You know, I'm play, probably the only thing that I'm not doing right now is the cocktail thing. But that's because I've got something that's already very, very similar. And the instructions on Revelations and Stagecraft blew my mind. These are such a strong lineup of tricks. They really are. And for somebody who's serious about learning magic 
and not just performing tricks. You want to check these guys out. I think they are doing an amazing job. So there you go. That's my uh, review of all of the launch titles. Now, what I want you to do is let me know down below what you think. What's your opinion? The 1914 are smashing out of the park as far as I'm concerned. Let me know Let me know down below. Is there anything that you like the look of? Go over to the website and check it out. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I've got a rant going up in about an hour and a half. I've got an honest trailer next. Uh, I've got an honest trailer tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we've got a Q&A. Oh, and don't forget, we've got a, uh, a talk magic on Saturday at nine o'clock. So I'll see you with all of those things. Like the video and I'll be back again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.